Hi, this is Carl Friedman, editor of Leather International magazine. I'm sitting here with Don Oshman, the editor and publisher of HideNet.com. Uh, at the end of APLF, the 30th anniversary, wanted to, to get together and speak about the show. And uh, Don, can you just tell me your initial impressions of the show and what main takeaways you're getting from it? Okay, I, th I think that, um, generally speaking, it's always good to come to a show. And uh, we have an expression in America, press the flesh. You meet someone, you shake hands, and information comes out to the benefit of one or both parties. You don't get at home, you don't get on the telephone, you don't get on email. So I think it's very, very good to come to fairs, and it's very good to talk to each other. And uh, my impression is that there's a lot of latent demand amongst the tanners in the Far East and maybe the rest of the world, but by the same token, there have not been a lot of sales made by the European and the American contingent, at least here, and in the week or so leading up to here. So with the market about to go down, there's a chance, but again, these tanners are waiting to buy and trying the sellers with lower bids that so far haven't been successful. Did I answer your question? And uh, an integral part of the show were, were some roundtable discussions that oh, involved with. Terrific. Uh, it was a great idea. I understand you guys did it in Bologna also. I was uh, honored to be a participant and the leader of one of the rooms. And in my room, there was uh, somebody there from Adidas and, and the coach, which are very indicative in the marketplace. We had a designer who talked to us about, what do you do about the high prices? Well, we designed it out. You know, it, because the mark, mark product has to sell for X and the leather cost is too high, the component cost is too high, we put less leather in. So we talked about that. Um, Fascinating opinion, fascinating stories I will not take the time to tell you about. But the per thing that I got out of that was brand, the sizzle with the steak, as we say in America, brand, people are very, very brand conscious. And even if the prices goes up, they will, they will pay because they want to have it. And we have a tremendously, tremendous growth in affluence in the Western world and in China, of course. And what were some of the other main um, challenges that the people were, were airing? Well, in, in the round tables, in the round tables there were issues of, of uh, the public's con conception or non-conception or concern about the green imprint, uh, the, the, the footprint that we don't want to have. And the point was made that our industry needs to make that we are the best thing ever happened to the greens of the world because we are the ultimate recyclers. Where would these hides go if we didn't tan them? Not to mention people love and need leather products. Leather naturally is uh, a big proponent of that. Yes, kind of leather product. naturally is, is, is promoting the fact, which we all need, even though there's no shortage of demand for leather today, we don't have enough hides to meet the demand, which is why the price is so high. That won't last forever, but people need to know what a wonderful thing leather is. And, and it's great for the, for the economy, but it's great for the environment. It's the best thing that happened to the environment. Because where would all these hides go? And people aren't gonna stop eating meat. And another main topic that was discussed was where the industry is going to be in the next 10 to 15 years. What, uh, what were some of the things that people were discussing then? We didn't touch on that too much in our room. Uh, I think that uh, there'll always be leather because people are always going to eat meat no matter what anybody says. And that skin, hide, has to be disposed of. And there's no other natural leather, no other natural, natural product yet that matches the properties of leather. And I'm biased, but it's a fact. And were you impressed with the, uh, with the turnout, with the, with the yes. caliber of people? Yes, it was terrific. It was a great experience for me, and I understand it went well when you did it in Italy. Uh, the people at the dinner were delightful. I was sitting at a round table, and a man comes up to me, a prospect, just met at these things. A great way to meet people to, uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, meet, what do you call it? W work the room, or <laughs> find prospects for your business. That's always good, which is always good in this business. You stop and meet somebody in a hallway at a trade fair here, and, oh, here's my friend Charlie. Oh, you have this, do I have that? That's always a very good thing. But the round table is excellent. At the end of the round table, we had uh, all the rooms, there were four or five rooms. We got together at a beautiful dinner put on by Leather International, and uh, we each got up to talk about what our rooms discussed. And it was very, very informative and very enjoyable, and I think very, very fruitful and productive. And the fair itself is it's a, much, you know, it's a much bigger event. And 30th anniversary, so it's much broader, a lot more people to uh, interact with. Do you feel that there was enough uh, communication among people? No. Th this fair, I was here from day one. And uh, 
uh, it grew and it grew and it grew, and then Shanghai opened up, and some of that went there. And I don't think the uh, the population of people in the leather and hide trade is as, I know it's not as great as it was years and years ago. Nothing to do with this facility. It's a trend. Uh, but again, people who don't come to these fairs, I think, are missing out. And you don't come here just to make business. You come here to make connections and to uh, uh, see what's going on in the world, to get out of your little narrow world in which we all live at home. And that was apparent during this? Yeah. I, I, I don't know anybody who came was sad they came. Yeah. I think they were glad they came. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your time, though. Thank you.